I'm part of the data science discovery team and in this video today we're going to be dealing with confidence intervals. So here suppose we want to estimate the average GPA of a high school student in Illinois. We drew a random sample of a thousand students from a population of a million students and recorded their GPAs. Right so we find that the average GPA in our sample is 3 and the standard deviation of the sample is 0 0.5. So what is our 95% confidence interval? So this is actually I think one of the easiest problems in this homework because everything is just given to you right you simply just need to put the uh, numbers together into the formula and make your confidence interval and as you can see here we don't sorry we don't even need to solve for any of our um upper and lower bounds right we simply need to uh you know give the answer in the format of our sample mean plus or minus the margin of error right so here we have the average gpa is three right which means um the sample mean is three the standard deviation is 0 0.5 and we want a 95% confidence interval. So if I see here, I have the formula written out for us, right? So our confidence interval, we know our sample mean uh, was three from the question, right? So three plus or minus, basically that margin of error. So this is what we need to solve for, right? So it's going to be three plus or minus, what is our margin of error? Well, that's going to be Z times the sample standard deviation divided by square root of N. and um, as you can see here, you know, we have the sample standard deviation and our n already given to us, right? So this is pretty, pretty simple problem. The sample standard deviation is 0 0.5 right and our n was a sample of 1000 students so this is going to be 0 0.5 divided by basically the square root of 1000 right so here we know that we now just need to uh, solve for our um we just need to solve for our z value right which we can find using the confidence level right so our confidence level is 95 percent what does this mean well this means that if i were to draw out a um nice looking bell curve right the area in the middle basically this entire this entire region this entire blue highlighted region here is going to be 95 percent right so um this this right here is going to be 0.95 right and if i want to find the z the z score let's say i want to find the z score of my um upper tail here right so we can use norm.ppf right because i know norm.ppf if you give it a an area then it outputs a z score right well here something to note is that norm.ppf requires the input to be the all the area to the left of a certain um basically value that we're trying to find right so we need to input all of the area to the left right because if we want this z-score uh the the input for norm.ppf should be you know given an entire area starting from the very beginning of the bell curve to the z-score you want to find right um what what is like the z-score of that tail basically right so here if this middle area is 95 percent we know that each of these ends will be 0 0.025 right because we know the um the total area under the bell curve is going to be one right so it's going to be 0 0.025 so basically to find the z-score we can just do norm.ppf of 0 0.975 uh, because this will be our you know area to the left this is basically blue highlighted region right so this is going to be three plus or minus and to calculate that z-score you can just use um python to calculate that right so it's going to be z equals norm.ppf of 0 0.975 you can also do this entire problem in python if that will be easier for you so it's going to be around 1.96 right it's going to be 1.9599 times 0 0.5 divided by square root of 1,000. And if you want, you can, you know, calculate this in Python. So I like to name my variables, right? So I can have x bar equals 3. Our sample standard deviation is going to be 0 0.5, right? Our n was a 1,000. So finally, our margin of error is going to be z times um, here. I'm just looking at this formula here. So it's going to be z times our 
uh, 0.5, which is our sample standard deviation. So z times SSD divided by square root of n, right? Basically, basically this formula right here. So z times SSD divided by square root of n, n to the power of half. And if I were to print out my margin of error, I'll okay, get around 0 0.03. So 0 0.03, this looks like it's this answer right here, and that is correct. So, you know, this, this question was pretty simple. It's just a kind of putting all the values you know together and finally making sense of what your margin of error will be. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Bye.